A word for our listeners. Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1920s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It is not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Join us each week as our investigators follow a path of clues and attempt to save the world from an ancient evil. Starring John Quiet, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedzwicky, George Chimples, Jason Hall, and Scott Troiano with Matt Quiet running the table as keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed cultists await you just beyond this music. Hi, welcome to Nerds Name Presents Maxim Yarla Thotep. I'm here with Jesse. Hi. Johnny. Hello. George. Howdy. Scott. Hello. Jason. Hello. Shirley. I'm with a bunch of idiots. Shirley. Hello. Hello. Shirley. Hello. I didn't say you first. I thought I said you three times. Oh and gosh. I'm Matt. I think you should say it between each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good nice call. One. Yeah. Well, I'm, no, I'm noting that. Yeah. Um, like last last time we buried Botticello at sea, burned some bodies, and had some questions <laughs> on whether somebody betrayed the group again. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the master again, of the again. universe, as far as the evil goes. Again, 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 again. Um, so let's I love start your with ego. <laughs> 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 let's start with Mr. Weld. Mr. Weld, you wanted to talk to Mr. Burns. So yeah. After Mr. Burns gets done stabbing a body for a while, <laughs> so I assume that you know you're doing your experiments. You come up to deck to breathe and get some fresh air. Um, well, the professor would still be down there doing some dissection, so I know where he is. I would, you know, meet you on the deck. And, but, uh, how's the studies? Uh, interesting. What did I discover since we haven't talked about that? Um, the metal? That's point. The metal is really resilient. Um, whatever this wood that they made it, the staff out of, the, the shaft of the spear, really solid too. It, it looks solid enough. You could do whatever you wanted to with it. If you want to turn it in, I'd be, you'd have to find somebody to make a help for it. But other than that, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but is it more effective than a standard knife no. in piercing their flesh? No. Okay. Well, I don't care. I guess uh, you know, it's not proved that the spears were any more effective in damaging the creatures than their own mm. implements are. They are very resilient. Well, Miss McCree and the captain and gave me their account of the battle, but I was curious to hear yours and what your impressions were. It was horrible. The monsters are were sly and ferocious. And, uh, I, I, while I was not a friend, I wouldn't say we were friends. I will miss. Uh, Mr. Bonicello, for the relationship that we did have. Do you think anything could have prevented his death? Well, he practically ran into the arms of the monsters. But beyond that, I don't know what they would say. What about Professor Wentworth's conduct during the battle? Do you feel it was appropriate? In what way? Miss McCree had some doubts as to whether he did his best to fight the monsters or to save Mr. Botticello. He failed and I failed. The captain said something similar. He uh, did Uh, not see any cowardice on on the professor's part. uh, The professor was behind me. Uh, Well, Strictly speaking, the professor came down the stairs and we met. Mm. And at one point, after that point, he was behind me. So if he if he ran or hid, I, I don't know. And given what happened in the county of the war, Castle Plum, Castle Plum. <laughs> given what ha- what he showed, he had learned in Castle Plum. I guess. Um, he could have employed those skills, but maybe he didn't think of it at the time. Or perhaps he, was, he didn't want to after the custody, so 
and, and yeah, and, and it, didn't, it didn't occur to him to try it here because you know, it was late and the surprise attack was he was worried about how he would feel seeing him do it again. I don't know. Maybe he knows something more about the creatures that made him think it would not be as effective. But I, you know, like I said, he he held himself as well as a, a man of learning could you know, in the situation. I didn't see anything specific. Well, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. I'll, uh, I'll talk to the professor myself and see if I can make anything further. But it sounds like you did what you could. I guess. I don't mean to cause you to doubt him. It's just Miss McCree shared her doubts with me. I wanted to just check everyone else's stories, I suppose. What did she say exactly? She felt that since he is the man of medicine, that he could have been more able with his skills, could have done something to save Botticello, perhaps didn't in light of their earlier disagreements. Yeah. After that, she, she's accusing him of letting Botticello down? After or, or near the end is what it seemed like. I don't think before the monsters were put down, their own minds. Maybe that's what she expected them to do. I don't know. Again, as you say, he's a man of learning, not a man of action. That's... Well, alright. Um, sorry I wasn't there. I'll... Unless you get this further, I'll let you know what I find. Okay. Alright, then... Go knock down with that section door, if that's alright. Okay. There's a knocking at your... I'm gonna just yell, come in. I come in. Think of me like a butcher. Yeah. Like leather apron, blood everywhere. What color is their blood again? Um, it's like a darkish, like darker than dark red. I mean, darker than it should be red. Yeah. Almost like a... Black and poor lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so... Yeah. Like, it, it's skinned. Yeah. <laughs> I maybe wrinkle my nose when I come in, but I don't. Yeah, it probably, probably stinks in you. I would imagine <laughs> both do anyways. <laughs> I just turn around like I'm holding like a big cleaver and like an arm that I've cut off, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, have you found anything, Professor? Anything of interest? I've just been making notes about its anatomy, resilience, muscle structure. If you don't mind, um, seeing as how I missed out on the events that led to this, would you mind? Uh, Taking a break and maybe telling me your account of what happened? Sure. I'll just I'll put everything on the table and yeah. take a few minutes to clean myself up. So I'm not all over gore. Yeah. What do you need to know? Hmm? What do you need to know? Just tell me, uh, what happened? How did you... I find it strange that everyone was alerted and I, I didn't hear a thing. Um, <laughs> and then, so I'm just trying to... Yes, apparently, unlike you, I wake up when I hear gunshots. What? So anyways, I was trying to, you heard gunshots, you went outside, and these creatures were around? No, I heard gunshots coming from the below decks. Oh, and I woke up, I heard gunshots coming from the below decks. So I left my room, I figured out where I was, and headed down to see what I could do to help. Obviously something was going on. On my way there, in the staircase, I was attacked by one of these... Whatever you'd like to call them, toad people. I prefer fish people, but looking closer, I can it see works. the toad-like yeah. aspect. Uh, he jumped me in the stairwell, gored my chest up. Uh, I went at him with a shotgun, obviously. Took some time to wrap a couple of quick bandages on so I didn't bleed to death. And then the captain and Burn uh, came down the hallway. They had apparently been fighting with them, which were the gunshots I originally heard. And we came back up to see what was going on to make sure none of them were behind us. And there were two of them in the hallway. They were trying to get to somebody's room, weren't they? Or some of them? Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> there were two of them in the hallway. Combat ensued. Botticello at one point came out of his room as well as Miss McCree. Uh, fifth one came out of a room, I don't remember which. There were two in the hallway, no. None of them came out of the rooms. There were five total. One on the stairway, two upstairs. One <coughs> upstairs, and then the other one downstairs. That one. Not one more than that. Oh, careful about this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we initially came up, I checked Miss McCree's room to make sure there were none in there trying to abscond with all our items. I figured they might be here to retrieve those. Uh, when I just found out they weren't, we went back to fighting. At one point, one of them did something with his arms. I'm still not quite sh- sure on what. And I guess you could say he hit me with his hand. Hmm. Uh, which seemed to have some kind of poison attached to it. So I spent most of the rest of the fight trying to figure out what was going on. And I believe Botticello charged at one point. And Mr. Byrne tried to back him up, but it was too late. He got torn in half. That's how he met his end? No. Do you mind if I... Have you changed your bandage lately? Do you mind if I look at one? No, 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 for it. I'll unwrap. Um, we'll, we'll say probably uh, like a, a left, like, upper yeah, down chest there. hole, white wound here, but mm-hmm. didn't go too far. And then probably like a forearm, like, like scrape. Not I, I, I've got no medicine. It'll be a fight. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to look for just any obvious signs that an untrained person could see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or anything. I mean, um, do you have first aid? Or do you roll first aid? Just it's base percentage. It's, nope. Okay. Um, yeah. They look like um, kind of like fang marks, but they're mm-hmm. like four of them. And they sure. look like you would have to guess, not that you know a lot about snakes, but you probably dealt with them at some point. S- small snake heads. Mm-hmm. Probably struck hmm, half an inch apart, right? And the fangs are maybe an eighth of an inch apart between each fang. So it's two fangs, an eighth of an inch between those two, and then two more fangs, and there's a and, uh, half an inch between the two strikes. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it, there's no signs of infection or anything. Not that you can tell. I smell the wound, so yeah, yeah not like oozing. You know, you know. How's your pain, Professor? I have some opium if you'd like it. Uh, it's manageable. No, not I also still have plenty of laudanum. I do. <laughs> I will offer you some laudanum as well. Um, maybe this evening. Let me know. Um, it might help with general soreness. Well, my eye is not as good as yours, but it looks clean, at least. So perhaps the venom won't have any one last time back, so there's no need. Yeah, well, like Jason Roll, first aid. Pass. Um, the more you move and the kind of at it, Sorry, no, there's no. something. Uh, maybe it's just that they were deeper than you expected, but you're going to need to see a doctor. Probably. I am the doctor. You're going to need to see a real, actual, like, medical doctor. Yeah. My medicine is notably higher than my first aid. Operating on yourself <laughs> is a terrible idea. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, you, you're, you're saying I've got a fang or something in there, basically. Um, or an infection, or Something you probably just don't have resources for when you, when you hit Egypt. It's probably a good idea. Could be like a tiny egg or something. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> we did just watch this Fringe episode. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eggs in the stingers. Oh. <sighs> or Hellboy or 2. Or well, Hellboy I'm one. certainly not going to yeah. bring that up to this group. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't look at it. I, I feel like they've impregnated me with some sort of evil animal. Yeah. It's like it's going <laughs> to. You guys need to know about Dead. that. <laughs> it's like it's going to burst from his chest. Um, okay, so I will remanage. Like, put cream on, smear stuff, all that. Also, should I do a psychology roll to see how I kind of perceive his telling of this tale? Yeah, go ahead. My psychology is garbage, by the way. And I fail. I don't seem to be lying. Um, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of remorse about Lavachilla dying. Mm hmm. Even in the way Jason tells it, just straight out. <laughs> yeah. Like, Botticello died, and then there was some stuff. Like, <laughs> but no one went over the professor that wouldn't. I wouldn't s- expect him to be. Yeah, I'm an A plus B equals C person. Yeah. yeah, but you've also, you have seen him become emotionally charged about, about situations, and this is not one of them. Right. So, 
Um, any questions? And so you say you're going to Miss McCree's room to see if any of the artifacts have been stolen. Been or in the process of being stolen. Correct. If the creatures were The last thing we want them. is one of these things to run out and slap the mask on somebody's face. Yes, yes. Um, and it makes perfect sense that this is where they would retrieve it. We're in a locked location. Right. Are you still on that? No, no, no. I meant like they might actually oh, okay. use it as a weapon. Oh, alright. That would be horrible. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, really? Okay. No, like grab you and slap them. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not bitching about you. It's okay. Like, I was like, wow. We still haven't let that go. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I believe that is all the questions I have for now. Um, let me know if you discover anything about the creatures. I'd be very interested to learn. I can't assist you with this myself. Well, I'm basically just taking them apart for all these purposes. Well, should you find any weaknesses or any answer to what they are? Obviously, they're creatures of some intelligence if they're using tools and have some well, yes, sort they of... they have a well-developed brain and critical thinking skills. And are capable of magics, it would seem. Based on experience, yes. Empirical evidence point that way. How oh, awful. Well, I will take my leave. <laughs> yeah, not my favorite animal I've ever heard. Let me know if you need any help otherwise. Sure. And then um, I'll go to the tree, I guess. Now, I knock on your door as you're reading a secret book. Now, <laughs> side question: as I as I skin him, um, does the skin smell salty as though it's a salt water salt salt water creature, or does it smell more like a? I mean, I've skinned fish and from both. Yes, and it's a salt water creature. After it has been up. And hung for several days, and then I skin it. Is I'm it? Sure it stays wet. I was gonna say, is the skin still <laughs> pliable and wet, or is it dry? I mean, he's gonna keep it wet. So yeah, even last I, game I was like, I'm gonna keep it in salt water. I, I know that's gonna happen. I roll it, <laughs> and uh, each couple of days I look at it. Is it deteriorating, or is it something that could perhaps be tanned and used to bind a book or two? No. Are they clothes out of it? Are there any black hairs? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Me close. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> you don't know that's what you do. So, um, <laughs> hey, focus. Sorry. So, water. Can you, can you skin a frog? Yeah. yeah. And then make something out of it? Or yeah. you can frog well, but, hide? But well, if it's thick like elephant hide, yeah, so it's <laughs> you batch it because they've got elephant I'm, I'm just going to buy an elephant hide. I'm going to say that there's a possibility for tanning this. Maybe. But you. It might not be flexible. You don't have the expertise for that. Wait, can I try to make this quick? Because you're trying to see if it can be made into a book. Hi, right? Is that your goal? Or perhaps armor. If, crazy, oh, if, cra if crazy Boy gets his hands <laughs> on it, it's a possible goal. All right. Well, because the reason why I ask is I know we're going to hit Egypt where I've done big game hunting mm -hmm. and had you could tan before. You could find somebody in Egypt for this. One, you're going to want to find some discreet. Because <laughs> you're gonna go. Here's the skin. Where'd it come from? Here's some skin. <laughs> not telling you. Why is it in the shape of an eight foot frog man? I don't know. Because I'm not like piece by piece in it. I want to. I want to put it on the floor oh, with a frog head <laughs> going ribbit. Oh, um, I, I have a question. Trophy. Can I push? Go ahead. As it's literally about the skin that's taken off. Are there black hairs on it? No. Like the book. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> what are the books of black hair? Thing? The, the book, book had black, black hair. On the skin, I wonder if this was the same creature. Like, oh, the book, like the, the book that I, oh, that I, yeah. yes. Okay. So, um, you would need to find somebody discreet, but you would uh -huh. also need to find somebody really good, because this is a brand new skin, so they're more likely to screw it up than not. Sure. So, that would be my suggestion. Somebody who messes with the heel. So, <laughs> you've spoken with everybody, Mr. Wall. Did you want to speak with Miss McCree? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Stuck around the door. Is uh, this probably two days after the funeral? Give it a little bit of time. Sure. Oh. Hold on a moment. Wait, what time of day is this? I'm, why are you looking at me? Man? What time of day? Midday. Oh, okay. Then I wouldn't have been opportunities. Shortly after lunch. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Hold on a moment, and um. Rest I don't know. Rest 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 rest. No, <laughs> I put it in my pillow and throw the blankets on the bed. And I'm coming up with the word. Are there any chairs in here? Uh, there's one at a desk. Um, <laughs> You're not sitting on my bed. No, that's a good item. Lounge out. So I spoke to 
the others, and none of them seem to have your feeling that um, the professor was in some way responsible for Brother Chevel's death. They seem to feel that the professor acted as much as a man who is not used to the rigors of combat could act, and that Botticello flung himself hand-to-hand -hand combat with them, and that there's a sadness that he died, but um, that Botticello is not responsible for it. Was, excuse me, Professor Wentworth. <clears throat> yeah, Botticello was responsible for it, too. I see. Um... Well, no one really had the basic point that I had. Thor was back with him when he was trying to get into my room. Um, I can, <clears throat> if that is their opinion, Professor, know who am I to argue? Sir, Professor Wentworth said that he was attempting to gain entry, or did gain entry to your room, because he was afraid that the creatures were trying to abscond with the artifacts, or even perhaps use them in some sort of offensive matter. Really? So my question is, why would we even think that they would want to do that? How would they know that, that, stuff, that we have these things? Or what importance would they be in to those creatures? What, he said do they, they used, have some relevance to the items that we have? He said they use magics. And that if they're aware of magical artifacts, and I assume that they may have some unnaturalness to themselves. Perhaps they are attuned to the unnatural capabilities of the artifacts themselves. I don't know. Well, the door was locked. There was no need for him to go in my room. How, how else could they get in here? Why would they get in I point to the porthole. I assume <laughs> they're not very big portholes. Yeah, right. but again, the, well, you saw the body. The, the, the head on the body the would not fit through that. Neither would the stocky shoulders. There, unless yeah. they can contort yeah, completely. They, 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 they can morph their body. Yeah, it, like, I've been told that, but also in character, like, them being weird, slippery amphibian things that are, have access to magical spells and oh. such. Man, they could slide under a door, I don't know. You know, so, like, <clears throat> like honestly. Okay. Alright, so my question is, how do you know their magic or could do any of that? I mean... He showed me the wounds on his flesh, um, and they... I was told that they... Their arms transformed into... Snake like limbs. The heads so of they got bigger, not smaller. I don't know about the size. All I know is that they they definitely have the ability to transfer the size. I don't know. Maybe they can turn into material. I don't know how. What modes of egress they would have or would not have. And in the immediacy of combat, whether the professor would be able to make distinctions such as a locked door or wondering. How the, the creatures got in. What else did you say? He merely told me about how they fought them, how he was awoken, and just kind of was matter of fact about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He didn't seem particularly sinister or emotional about the affair. Didn't seem evasive, or what that's worth. Well, then maybe I was mistaken. How would you want to proceed with this? I would think. Being vigilant would be important, but maybe you feel a different way. Well, if everyone in the group doesn't see anything that I'm seeing, maybe I'm just being overreactive as a female. I doubt that's the case. I'm trying to be impartial myself as I was not there, but... So far you're the only one who has had that impression of that. That's what we did. Byrne did say he didn't have the best vantage point. So... Right. Well, I'm just... To asking you to recall the events that happened at the castle and how everyone felt um, at, about his actions, and I feel that some of his actions were similar. Right. Well, tell me again once more. Do you feel that he... What do you feel he did specifically to lead about a child's death or did not do? I believe there was a time after Botticello was attacked, instead of um, instead of waiting as long as he did in the stairwell, and then instead of trying to get into my room, which was locked, um, he could have assisted Botticello.
Miss McCree? I don't know. I do worry about making our party reduced by one more after we've already lost one person. I'm not saying to behead him or throw him over the edge, or I'm just saying we need to keep an eye on him, and if this type of action becomes more, or his apathy becomes greater toward <clears throat> toward things that would normally not warrant that type of those type of feelings, or those type of non-feelings, or certainly. Do you think we should say anything to the professor, or merely keep an eye on him? I think we should keep an eye on him. But I don't think that the whole group is going to be as vigilant as I will be in the future. Alright. Well, I will keep my eyes open as well. Well, I appreciate that. How are you spending your days? I haven't seen you out and about. Um, I haven't seen very many people. I've been walking a little bit. Um, eating. I just don't feel like being out around people right now. I mean, even though Botticelli was painting my patootie, you know, I just, I can't be out there with everyone right now. I understand. Um, well, should you need anything, I take my leave. Thank okay. you. So, uh, I know as soon as I say the trip went fine, the rest of the trip went fine, everybody's going to have something else they want to do, right? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, wait. <laughs> can I roll to increase my hearing? Uh, you can roll a d4. Yeah! <laughs> minus, <laughs> this, mi a d4 minus game. 6 plus 2. No, it's just a d4 plus 1. Sweet. Oh, it's in uh, I thought you already upped that in the first round. I could be wrong. No, it's at 70. Okay, then go ahead and roll a d4. Plus one. I have all high skills on each train yet. Are we upping skills at this point? No, we did that when we got on the boat, but these two have said that they were going to spend their time specifically doing something. Mm. So, and, and surely you can't up anything you're reading. Yeah. Uh, my listen got us into a lot of trouble, so I had to really work on that. <laughs> my listening better. Yeah. We arrive in Port Syed, or Syed, um, which is about a hundred mi miles north of Cairo. Uh, when you arrive at the port, um, that, that's the way that Egypt works. Why are you looking at it like that? Is it really that much more Egypt? Yeah, right, hundred miles. Yeah. Right, just checking. Hold on. Hold on. I, I just read this. I want to make sure I actually. Not right. Alexandria, but like Cairo, straight north of Cairo? That, that was Some 100 miles from the Mediterranean at the apex of the Nile Delta, yeah. Oh, at the apex of the Nile Delta, that's all, like downtown Cairo. That's, yeah. Okay. Right, well, sorry. and you have to remember this is old Cairo. This right, isn't right, like. Right, right. Okay. Well, I, well, let me rephrase. Well, right. This is new old Cairo. Right. Instead of old, old Cairo, which is still there. Right. And definitely not current Cairo. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does that all makes sense. This is Cairo B. Yeah. Because I looked at a map recently and went, wait, that's in the it, ocean. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Sorry. No. Um. So you guys arrive at the port. Um. You're greeted by uh, an English official, who kind of walks you through visa paperwork. Um. It's part of what you have to do. Um. And then, as you're coming like down off the boat, you realize, you know, we got to get the train. That at like you, you're kind of uh, professor, you're kind of familiar, <laughs> but but it has been a while. Yeah, those are kids. And as you come down like that, the last few um, feet towards like the main street, there's a gentleman standing there. So Jesse, would you like to describe yourself? Yeah, he's about five foot six, uh, wearing a white shirt with a black vest. Uh, it is legal to pack. Agent. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I have a gun on my hip. I have a ratty, torn cowboy hat on. Uh, Do you have looks, a cowboy hat or a fedora? Uh, it might have once looked like a fedora. Yep. It, it, it is. It has definitely seen better days. Um, but not like a Stetson. No, no, no. <laughs> what ethnicity are you? Um, American. Okay. Merc, what did you say? Merc. He's Merkin. <laughs> you know, because he's got that gun on his hip. Yep, I'm Merkin. Great. Um, <laughs> so... 
went up. Do I see these guys? Yeah, you see them, and you recognize almost me, because I assume uh, you captured them, because you are in your safari gear. I am now. I've come off the ship. So you see now. the safari guy, and you're like, oh, that's gotta be them. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you were told to ask for the Wilkerson part. So, John but Hurst. at that point, you also see an old professor you used to know. I am going to look shocked and then run up to you. Slap you on the shoulder and, hey, how's it gun. going, Al? <laughs> <laughs> my gun. Yeah, the guy comes out and runs around with a gun and go, runs at the professor, right? Al, how's it going? I haven't seen you in ages. Why drag you out the Satan sandbox? What are you, what are you doing pip pip cheerio over here, Frank, Frank, you might not remember me. Nice. Do you remember this man? <laughs> I wasn't in your you class long. You've seen a lot of students. He looks kind of familiar. Maybe if you knew his last name, okay. it might remind you. You can roll knowledge after he, tell, he tells you his last name. Uh, Frank. Frank <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> Frank, like, Frank Cooper. Like, I, I was a yeah. student of yours a while back. Uh, the fact that some of us have had to draw on weapons but don't have them pointed at him exactly draw any attention from your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Cooper was this dropout from a few years ago. He was really emphatic, but something about wanting money <laughs> and being a little maybe greedy about the the, the art of archaeology. Um, he was a tomb robber. It wasn't a tomb robber. <laughs> At the time. At the time. Yeah. yeah. That guy. I would point out that most of the archaeologists from that period were totally <laughs> tomb robbers. Well, they were but, a little bit more robbery. But than there, there's a there's a group like Professor Wilkerson and his parents who were sincere, pressure. sincerely looking to learn. Yeah, no, no. And, and then, then also rob. And then there's Indiana Jones. <laughs> so this is the guys. museum <laughs> in, in, you know, in America and do the imperialistic stuff. But this guy's just, I'm going to solve a place in the time. Uh, so yeah, I'll shake your hand like, as the light comes on. <laughs> so, half question. It's like the Wentworths, then the Joneses, then the Bellocks, then this guy? <laughs> you could put another level in there and put him at the very bottom. Nice! Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what, but do you remember out and about like this? this do you remember in uh, The Mummy? Do you remember Benny? Yeah. 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 Oh, man. No. Wait a minute. What are you, are you about to? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you have eight necklaces on? <laughs> Made of human ears. You probably awesome. do have several yeah, trinkets. I, I do that have pick yes. up, yeah. a ring or two that's more than usual. Is this, sorry, how so, old did you say your character was? 21. Yeah, okay, so we would not no. overlap. No, not at all. No. no, no, no. no. Um, see, I see your company's approved. Who's the flapper? No, that's sure. hip hip. Yeah. yeah. Hey, doll, what are you doing? Be careful. Hey, what, what, why are you traveling with this piker? Yeah, the barrel's coming uh, up. Yeah, you, it's like, not going down, it's yeah. coming up. I put my hand on my gun and like back into the drum. Much like head. well, Mr. Cooper was a former You know, sir, I don't know who you are. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. nice to meet you. Young man, because I'm older who? than you. Who? Who are you? Be the more adventurous. Uh, I'm Eva. Who are yeah, you? The interesting. Frank. Nice to meet you. Now we know each other. Nice to meet you, Frank. Wait, why are you traveling with the Piker? You both talk at the same time. Uh, well, we're doing stuff. <laughs> I know. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to escort you guys around. So we didn't order an escort. Did we order an escort? You've well, met, that's... but not been properly introduced, Lord Wilkerson. Lord Wilkerson. No, no, yeah, yeah, go Yeah, ahead. Lord Wilkerson. Uh, called ahead. Told me to meet you guys. I'm to escort you around town. You're I not. assume it's you guys. You you look Lord Wilkerson ish. Pip pip trio and all that. It, it wouldn't be the first time your father's called ahead, just, you know, to be helpful. And he probably was just being helpful. Uh, now the barrel comes down. Okay. Your father knows this cat. I didn't think Apparently. you ever left it. No, I don't, but, well, it's flush, so here I am. Well, any friend of the world person is a friend of mine. <laughs> good, good. I know a nice bar over here I can escort you to first. We got bourbon. Any... We need some bourbon. I'm sure it does. Um, perhaps the lodgings would be more important. Bourbon's good. Uh, Cairo's only about 100 miles. It's less than a day, half a day trip. It might be best to go to Cairo first. You lodge it there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go to Cairo first. It's better bars. Pretty close. I kind of point toward and traveling. To better the case. Or better traveling bars? Traveling. Better bars. Better locations. Better environments. Wow, it's kind of hot here. Is Not it hot for me. There? 
Yeah, no, actually, <laughs> um, Miss McCree so with the proper attire, it's you will not feel the weather at all. So exactly. Because is, women are half naked. It is exactly. February. February. It is February 20th. It's probably uh, at the high, like 75, but it's like a it's sun hot, sun hot, like the sun is on you. There's shade from the buildings, but that's not it. Well, I, well, did, and, I take my and there's, there's, trench coat off. There's a breeze coming off the Mediterranean, but as most of you know, once you move away from that water, that breeze is going to go away. And if it's sun hot, like 75 degrees, when you step into the shade, it gets cooler quickly, but yeah. Yeah, it's still not good for you. So, um, And I would actually expect Mr. Cooper to be carrying probably extra water skins for you. Yeah. To enhance them out immediately. Just Kind of as a, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. This is, you're going to need this. I passed the professor uh, some laudanum as well. <laughs> and it's Cooper or Copper? Cooper. <laughs> and, 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 like, as you take that, your shoulder, a- your, your, yeah. your chest aches just a little bit, and you, you realize now that you're on land. It might be time. Oh, we're going straight to Cairo. Probably a better doctor in Cairo than. Do I see him bandaged up? Uh, uh, probably not. not. Um, you might see, like, like a, on the forearm. Yeah, yeah. something on the forearm. You don't seem like that kind of fella. So, anyway. Nice to meet you all. I know these two, and I assume you're the, Lord yes. Jr.? Quite. Oh, I, 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 I knew the skin. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet water? <laughs> no, it's oh, hydrate water. Okay. Well, you've been to Egypt before. Right. Hydration is... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, like, hydration is important. Like, yeah, it's nice to drink, but it's a terrible idea sometimes. Right. So, the the yeah. idea being that uh, I was particularly worried when the unknown <laughs> armed man came up and started chasing the skirt immediately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I drink I drink up and a little bit more. Okay. So, are you dressed in your funny clothing or white silks? <laughs> well, it's an eccentric, right? Courtney Hathaway Wells well with the Cambridge Twins. Must be one of your friends. You've heard of your friends. You've heard of the Cambridge Twins. students just like you. Adam. Oh, so it, it, it is the fail. You've heard of the Cambridge Bloods. Have I? Yeah, okay. uh, you might have sold some stuff to probably one of his cousins. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have. <laughs> Did I sell good stuff? Or? It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, my cousins probably wouldn't know the difference between. I mean, out of character, wouldn't know the difference between. Then, then clearly the bad yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. I mean. So, do you kind of grin like that as you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've got some interesting artifacts in order. I, I, if you're not you disowned or anything, are you? It, it happens. You collect artifacts. I collect artifacts, yes. Oh, yes. I think perhaps we should look at those. <laughs> so, I, are you not a tour guide? I look meaningfully, oh, yeah, I I look meaningfully at the professor. <laughs> yeah, I'm like over here, like, pinching the bridge of my nose. Like, or dear, oh, I'm right. whatever you need me to be. I'm sorry? I am whatever you need me to be. No, the point before that. Lord Jr. <laughs> Lord Ling? Lord Led? Do you what? understand why? We <laughs> need men to help with the trunks. I wander off and start to look for a few local porters to start moving back. I'm like, I don't want to talk to this person. You probably know a couple of local porters. Yeah. He might. I do too. As in, look, a guy. <laughs> Yeah, right the docks, there'd be a lot of like, yeah, guys no, just waiting. I'll right. a five dollar bill and point the back. <laughs> and they go, hmm, dollars, not that important. They don't really work here. Uh, what? I hold British up a five money? pound sterling note. Dollars? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. five dollar, five pound sterling. Like eight guys are like, <laughs> like <laughs> petting you, and like, like lifting you your, 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 your thing, and then other people oh, are lifting the people lifting your thing. <laughs> Um, and actually, a gentleman does come up with that, with a, almost like a parasol. Pops it up <laughs> over the lady, and then steps like out of arm's reach <laughs> enough so he won't get smacked right in the face. <laughs> so she looks a little rough and tumble. Uh, dollars? No. I hated my duster. <laughs> <laughs> you hated your what? Duster. And he takes it. So you guys, uh, you uh, provide supporters to take you to the train, I assume. Um, you head to the train. The train ride is, um, a l- what? At any point, does Mr. Cooper offer alternate transportation other than the train? I don't know, D. It's not, I mean, the train is the way yeah, to go. Yeah, the train's the fastest. Okay, otherwise, like, I have a car. Or a yeah, camel, otherwise, it's going to be like. <laughs> so, wait, uh, 
Now, within earshot of the group on the train, I will engage you in conversation about your adventurous lifestyle so they understand who you are. Um, <laughs> a, a car is going to take you probably a little over half a day, a camel or, or a horse is going to take you longer. Yeah. Plus, horses don't do well on sand. So. Is this like everybody is in the state. same car, or do we have compartments? Uh, it'd be two or three cars. This would be a passenger. No, be- because part of the point where I ask is I'm still curious as to whether he's going to try to snooker us out of bags, money. No, no. like, yeah, we're, we're going to go the other <laughs> route than the train <laughs> no, that no, everyone he, takes. He's okay. like, the, the train's this way, and right. like you guys get that, head that way. Okay. No, you are probably all in a like a passenger car. Kind of thing. Uh, this is not like an overnight sleeper kind of thing. Were they prepped on what they were up to, or is it supposed to escort them around? You or? just know that that they might need to go into those places that aren't well visited. Um, it, it was left exceptionally vague. <laughs> Your bet is one of two things. They're either here to rob a grave or they're here to do something else nefarious or potentially nefarious. Yeah, it, it, just as vague <laughs> as it was left and, and like you care. Yeah. So. so what brings you guys to the beautiful land of Egypt? I'll look at everybody else. Don't y'all talk up at once here. Artifacts. <laughs> oh, I've got plenty of them. <laughs> like, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, them. I'm pointedly saying nothing while I stare at the wall. Like, uh, how, how, did, how did you get him to shut up? In class, he wouldn't, I mean, just wouldn't give the students a chance to say anything. Oh, one last adventure for the old bones. You know how it is. Uh, how long have you been in the land of pharaohs? Uh, it's been a couple of years. Immediately after you left your studies? Around about. Have you ever been down to Kenya? No. Or traveled to the <laughs> Orient at all? No, I'm, I'm going to point at you. <laughs> Why would I want to go to Kenya? <laughs> <They're> <laughs> <all right. laughs> uh, Miss Echo. He seems genuinely confused by these questions. Yeah. Is there a reason I should go to Kenya or the Orient? I don't know. Do you want to? Psychology. Not Is again the questions? Yeah. He sincerely seems confused <laughs> by these questions. Like, no, he's he clearly is built for Egypt. I mean, that's you can tell that from the ways, but it doesn't sound like he's why the Orient. There's not treasure there like there is here. Uh, <clears throat> well, the, there are many times that my father likes to attempt to be, how shall we say, helpful. Uh, this is not the first time that I've had individuals who might be not perhaps as <clears throat> polished as anticipated in the. The further we travel from the realm, uh, he seems genuine. Good to know. So his name's Wally. That's good to know. Who, who are you, by the way? I, I still haven't got your name. Ian Berg. Ian. When was the last time you worked for the Penny Foundation? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, you have. <laughs> have I worked for that? <laughs> you're, fam- Thursday. you're familiar with them because you purposefully avoid their dig sites because they do things well, on the up and up. Time I, yeah, this I, guy. I, I <laughs> don't tend to work with them very often. All right. I try not to. Why do you try not to? <laughs> I have reasons. Such as? Hold on. <laughs> reasons? You're being well, awful big there, Cooper sir. Is, but he, I, there's not an opportunity to make as much money there as I would on other sites. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. he's an adventurous sort. Scott, did you have a question? <laughs> He's not the let me examine a bookcase in Erica. Uh, what's her face's mansion? No. Okay, God. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay, good. That guy wouldn't have talked anywhere near as much. Okay, good. <laughs> Wentworth would have recognized him from the house. No, this is also true. Okay, I'm sorry. I would have recognized him. No, no. So, Mr. Cooper, you are meant to be our guide. Right. And mm-hmm. Yes. And our. Uh, Agent in this locality. Do you have any other skills? Obviously, you know your way around the graves and tombs. I know everything this guy taught me. Yeah. Quite a lot, I imagine. And you're handy with a pistol, I suppose. In uh, character, I'm shaking my head no. <laughs> I, in character, I know that you think that nobody besides you <laughs> yes. is. So it's not necessarily a fair evaluation of this individual. Although it could be accurate. Well, well, consider he sure. left college at 19. <laughs> I'm just like, no. No, I didn't. <laughs> I can shoot rather straight. And, uh... I'll say about that. Mr. Bolton. Sleep with your door locked, Frank. 
I just mm-hmm. smile vaguely. <laughs> yeah, professor? Yes. How were his marks? Well, there's middling. And there's what comes after that. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so you guys kind of spend the train ride getting to know uh, Frank. It's clear from everything Frank dodges saying <laughs> that he's a true robber. Right. But he also knows the locale. Uh, I'll also give intimate to him that after a couple hours, you know, just say, like, you know, we've been attacked a few times, so A, be on your guard, but B, we may not trust you immediately for that respect. I don't say it outright, but you can grasp it. And, and I'm, I'm gathering from your mannerisms that you are a storyteller. Yeah. Okay. So he starts telling this, this tale about this time that he went into this tomb to, you know, look at things. <laughs> Definitely not steal them. <laughs> because that would be wrong. Um, and then he found something that and, and you get a, uh, a sense that he doesn't want to talk about it and quickly and clumsily changes the subject to a different story altogether. Mm. So... I eye him suspiciously. <laughs> uh, could you go back uh, a bit? Uh, to, the other, to the other story. I had a, had a few questions. I would rather not. We were on a different story. The story is more important. It's like the other time we're full of playing. I mean, the, the other story is more interesting. No, the story is just fine. You haven't heard the story. How do you know the other story is more interesting? I, we want, haven't to hear, heard the con- I want to hear this story. But we haven't heard the conclusion of the thing you saw from the previous story. Yes, in the tomb. What? Some big mm-hmm. idea about that. Go on and finish your story. Oh, strange this place. story is good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, uh... It was it was hieroglyphs that I couldn't translate. There, there's a, there's a few of them I haven't seen around before. Well, we have quite the assemblage of mine here. Perhaps you'd like to sketch them for us. Oh yes, I would rather not. Well, the uh, give, me a, give me a psychology roll for anyone that would like to find out. Yeah, maybe train. Yeah, that might a Anybody that succeeded? Yeah. Me. Yes. Okay. Um, you you notice that not only is he avoiding it, but um, it's making him anxious and creeping him out. Um, similar to feelings that you all have had recently when seeing those things, like the creatures that got on the boat, or that time that you looked in that pit. So I kind of give everybody what? else the eye. Um, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Maybe that story really isn't that important. And I don't eye anyone but Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Our illustrious entourage has engaged in several things that have been unsettling to the degree of which you will associate with these hieroglyphs. If you are to accompany us, accompany us in any way, shape, or form, we do anticipate to see more of this. It has a lingering and rather hateful countenance in that it is something you had best start to become at least ready for seeking. And we seek these things not to profit from them, but to destroy them. When you left this tomb, was it left? Did you flee in terror? Was it left open, such as someone else or something else? Could come and take it. I got it. Or escape. You, I believe, you destroyed that. I took other stuff from that. It yeah. wasn't so. It it was destroyed. Well, that's good to know. In any event, this is what we deal with now. Things of that nature. So about that bar. Well, about that plane. I give some more love, like Professor. <laughs> um, it's, it is about that time that you arrive in Cairo. Cairo. Um, the uh, your new guide finds you quarters quickly and has you settled at um, we'll talk, call it Hotel Cairo. I'm question. Yes. What weapons are you visible in here? Nine millimeter. Okay. I will also stress on you because he's gonna need something. After this conversation, <laughs> I'll also tell you when you're engaging when you're hiring people. Please only use people you previously engaged in trust because we've had people try to infiltrate the servants surrounding us and honestly try and steal things or kill us. So be discreet and be 
only only deal with those that you can trust. So during this scene, as we're checking into the hotel, Hotel California is playing in the background. No, it's not. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's like a ragtime version. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, you are. Uh, I don't want to hear that song. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you find uh the Hotel Cairo on Midden Talat Herb. That's uh, it's what's uh, I swear that's what Midden means. Midden, Midden. So what Midan means is that it's a square, not a street. Um, it's a very nice hotel, probably similar to something that you would have stayed at in London or in uh, New York had you stayed in a had you stayed on uh, or at a different place. Now that I've gone the battle up and started my way through it, so I should it's a decent hotel. At the yeah, it's a nice hotel. Uh, probably mostly British and French in the hotel. As guests, and they all, and everyone working there speaks very, very passable English, if not perfect English. So, um, you guys get set up in your rooms. What next? I'll change some money to pounds so that I've got okay. flush cash. You mentioned you were nice an artifact. Uh, I'm going to discreetly leave place. and go look for a guy here. Um, can I try and spot him leaving? Uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody's going uh, to disappear. Me too. <laughs> uh, um, Jason, you can give me like a sneak at uh, times three, whatever your base is. Oh yeah, I got it. Funny. Yeah, you made it. Yeah, no, I oh didn't. Uh, I'm not really trying to be sneaky. I'm just trying to be discreet. Like I'm oh. like, hey guys, I'm gonna get this huge freaking rune on my chest. Yeah. Um, you find that the uh, yeah, you guys see the professor kind of head out. But are you going to follow him? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I will kind of rush up to come up one side. I'm going to follow both of them, but very discreetly. Professor, we're off somewhere. Forward. I'm going to go check with the doctor. Do you mind if I accompany you? I, if you really want to. Well, I worry about any of us going anywhere alone, and also if you're seeing medical attention. Willie? Willie, was it? Excuse me? Willie? <laughs> Where, Where's I, Willie? What was your name again? Courtney Hathaway Wells. <laughs> Courtney. Courtney, really? Courtney Hathaway Wells. What? <laughs> anyway, I thought you wanted to look at the artifacts. Oh, um, matters of the flesh must come first, and I don't mean prostitution. Thank you for catching that. Go ahead. Well, I think that that's where his mind, his mind would go immediately. <laughs> so I can take it a few places. Oh, I know. Um, do you know any good doctors in there? Yes. Who needs to go to a doctor? Well, as you see from his bandages, we just want to make sure everything's, uh... Oh, I know the perfect doctor. <laughs> the per- I'm going to pointedly look at you. <laughs> Are you sure, Frank? Expense is not an issue in this, so we don't need to go yeah. to a, uh... I don't want a shanker mechanic. I want a doctor. <laughs> you, 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 so this is all on the up and up. You're not yes. worried about things. You mentioned working with people I know? People I know don't work in a hospital. But they can fix him up. I'd prefer professionals. This one I think we're okay going to a reputable place. Yeah, I can take you there. All right. In case you should become faint due to some of their treatments, someone should be around to make sure you're not accosted. So, so you head to the hospital. Uh, the first United Hospital of all. <laughs> Cairo. <laughs> 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 On the corner of XYZ and ABC Street? Yeah. Once I notice it's a hospital, I turn around at the back of the hotel. Okay. Um, <laughs> I kill them. <laughs> you, uh, you check in, you check in and actually you're handled, um, at, you know, it's probably a Catholic hospital, and it's probably French. <laughs> I look for uh, any priests. No, uh, they, they, the, the nurses or nuns probably both check you in. You're treated well since you're American and not just uh, an Egyptian that needs help. Um, you're set up in a room, a doctor comes and pokes around. I'll take off my bandages, explain like, about the soreness, possible month of damage. Um, he looks at it for a little while, pokes around at it, comes, leaves, comes back, um, talks to you about snake bites and what to do with them, but <laughs> yeah. they, he doesn't recognize the snakes. Do you know what snake it was? Uh, it was non-poisonous, clearly, since I'm still here. <laughs> There's some sort of infection or something in your muscle. Okay. There are two ways we can handle this. 
I can give you antibiotics and that might fix it. Or we can burn it up. Uh, okay, can I roll anything to identify any kind yeah, of snake? Roll medical. Or oh uh, snake, natural history. Natural history. Yes. Uh it's probably some sort of underwater snake. Poisonous, maybe. Hard to tell. I, the player, don't know any of yeah, that. That's because it may or may not be a real snake. It's also magical. Remember that. Yes. So um, even if it is poisonous, it's potentially magical poison. Uh, let's do both. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, that would be the treatment after burning. But it, uh, yeah, so yeah. Maybe. So they, the, the, he calls a few orderlies over. Some large gentlemen come and hold <laughs> you down. Hold me down. Um, he gets a small, very, very small, thin poker and cauterizes each bite mark. Uh, you lose a point of health. Take point of damage from it. It's really painful. Um, and he then gives you some antibiotics and uh, some blood to help with the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I move it away from well. <laughs> um, it is exceptionally painful, and that smell is not a smell you enjoy, that, that burning flesh smell. Yeah. And there's also <laughs> that some, one's me. There's also some, like, sickness smell to it, too. Well, uh, like sepsis? Not sepsis so much, like... Rotting... Yeah. Unholiness leaving the body. You know what you smelled when you <laughs> yeah, cut open we that... We know it's that. You know what you smelled when you cut open that that thing and it sat for a couple of days? That's the kind of... Like, okay. Putrid. So it's necrosis. Yeah, it's disgusting. Uh, but if he burned it out, that might be the end of it. You don't have to worry about it. Hopefully. You roll uh, one point. Well, yes, it's like, yeah. Oh, look, I passed. Okay. Um, so you guys get done at the hospital. Uh, Mr. Cree, you didn't go to the hospital. Anybody else didn't go to the hospital? As soon as I seen she turned and left, and he's at the hospital, I'm going to turn and call her. Uh, I won't say it. I would appreciate it if you would not mention this to Mr. Kareem's. I have no need to be shot to death in my sleep. I'll just say you came to get your uh, bandages changed. Thank you. And everything looked good. Um, Mr. Byrne, did you go with him to the hospital? I didn't think you did. Mm -hmm. Captain, you did not either. So, Mr. Captain Wilkerson, Mr. Byrne, what are you guys doing? Attempting uh, to get settled in the room. Okay. Anything else? Have we died? Not yet. It's you probably dined uh, on the train on the sh on the train for lunch and dinner will be in a few supper will be in a few hours. Um, I want to secure a separate room, not under my own name, on a different floor. You're gonna do that on the download away from the players or the group as well. Um, yes, for now, okay. and I will then bring Weld. And then let Miss McCree know that that is a place where she wants to store the artifacts. I will let Well, Burn, and McCree know. Okay. Frank is not to know. No, not, not, <laughs> not yet. And then I will converse with the three of them and suggest should we bring the red with the. Those two were in charge of the artifact. That's Burn and McCree. Burn and McCree. And Weld is. The benefactor slash point man on the majority of this. I'm not lumping mm -hmm. you two together. I'm just merely they, there were concerns. It's not a net super mm -hmm. take kind of thing. So uh, you get the room without a problem. It's not a big deal. Uh, you actually are offered afternoon tea. Oh yes. Which is the first time you've been offered afternoon tea in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. And, and <laughs> it's civilization. Finally, <laughs> civilization. It's not. It's not tea like at home. Oh yes. It's close. But it's, they it's, put the effort in, and that's what matters. Bergama? Yes. Okay. So then, fine. Um, Mr. Weld, you sp what were you? You went with the doctor, Mr. Or with the professor, Mr. Byrne. What were you doing? You were getting settled in. That's what yeah, you said. Just getting settled in and meeting at the appropriate time. Okay. Do you join the captain for tea? If I'm invited. Well, they just assume that you're all British. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you, you head down to tea. Uh, Mr. Cooper, what he used to say in that, Mr. Cooper and Ms. McCree, you guys are both kind of headed back to the hotel. These streets aren't safe to walk alone. I think I'm going to get back there. I put my hand on my gun. Uh, and, 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 as, you, as you look around, you realize that while you have that gun, it may not be the best thing. Not only are they kind of not safe, but you could get lost. You're, these aren't... I this don't is, know where I'm going. Well, this is New Cairo, quote-unquote New Cairo, mm -hmm. and the streets are a little windy. Mm -hmm. um, you pa 
pass by a couple streets that went deeper into Old Cairo, mm -hmm. and calling those windy streets doesn't do it justice. And they're also like this wide. Yeah, they're like yeah. they're like half a, a good sized man's shoulders apart. Okay. So like those aren't real streets; they're like alleys, and then alleys are like even smaller. So it, it's it's not a it's not necessarily that he's wrong. And most people here don't speak their language. There's, you see a lot of British or French, a lot of Europeans, but there are still a ton of Arabic and Egyptians. So. Well, I appreciate your company. I just need to get back to my room. Back to your room, but the bar is right over this way. <laughs> You're a hoofer, aren't you? You can dance, can't you? I haven't done that in a while. Let's go. <laughs> oh, no. And suddenly, Mr. Cooper pushes her into Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's house. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> this will be good. <laughs> um, as the day kind of progresses, you guys have tea, you guys come back, and it gets close to dinner. The wind picks up, and there's a small dust storm. In the afternoon, I'm going to get over to the gun shop store or whatever. Okay. Are you going to ask for directions? Uh, yeah. And do they make it back into okay. the okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no we're not making it back at tea. this point. So, yeah, I'm going to ask you for directions to notable gun retailers and sellers. You'll have to do it at the hospital. This is after I come back in the afternoon. Notable? Or? Well supplied, above board, not black market. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give them the directions. I'm right. gonna stick with the professor. Would, this is would you like an escort? No, I got well. He's a ninja. I'm gonna peel well aside while he's discussing where a gun shop might be and uh, and, uh, and inquire. <clears throat> where, they, where did you want the professor get off to? Oh, uh, we went to go see uh, the hospital. He wanted to get his bandages checked and see if there's any infection. Am I here? Mm, yes. Yeah. You got the proper administrations, I think. You won't be incapacitated or anything like that. Yeah. And then I'll accompany you against the door. Oh, we're we making a trip to the Yonder. I am. I don't know. If you would like to come, you more than welcome. Let's go buy some goats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys uh, kind of head up as a group. I assume, Mr. Byrne, you, you're all about getting more guns, right? Or replacing yours with another set that was similar to your old ones. <laughs> or we could take that as the storyteller asking you, are you the one guy that wants to be left alone? <laughs> as, <laughs> yeah. At first, I'm like, at first, I say, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'll just hang out here. And then and as I realize, I do a head count. I'm like, you know what, guys? On second thought, <laughs> I'd like to take in the sights. That's um, it. Sight scenes. So, That's it. Yes. So the guy that he recommends, I have purchased firearms in this particular neck of the woods before. You've heard of him. He's reputable. I mean, he's going to carry a lot of the same stock as everybody right. else. Right. So it's not like Shady McShaker's in. No, 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 no. Fair enough. Little Bob discount gun. Are, are, are you all going to the shop? Yes, certainly. Well, then I have to accompany Why? So, because if something happens, I don't get paid. Well, fair enough. So you guys head to the gun shop, and all right. the good so, news is... That do tonight for Nurse Man for Sense Mask and Carol Uh you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, you can buy our shoots over shoots. You can buy our shirts. <laughs> no, I want some shoots. shoots and Dang it! You can buy our shirts over at slashloot.com and we will talk to you guys real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network. The network where it's on.